Jose Castro, First Lady Maya, for letting the Mexican come in and just run the house today. <laughs> about the name of our ministry or the name of our church or what denomination or fellowship we belong to. I know that the Bible says we serve the same high priest. I know who my God is and I trust you know who your God is. And all I pray and all I ask God is that I just fall recklessly in love with him. That's the desire of my heart. Just to fall recklessly in love with Jesus. Woo! Without him, I'm nothing. I need him. I desire Jesus. I desire his presence and his power. I just want to fall in love with him every moment. Yes. We are the bride. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet and open up your Bible to the book of Joshua, the first chapter. God's given me a fresh word. You have anointed musicians here. Yeah, Jesus. That's a blessing. Not every church has that. Trust me, I know. Yeah, I know. Hallelujah. The book of Joshua, the first chapter. We're going to read verse 8 and 9. You can keep playing both of them. I love the sound of the organ in the sanctuary. Yeah, Jesus. God gave me this word on Wednesday morning, Pastor. As we got up to get started in our day with my beautiful wife who's there, Andrea. Yeah. Where are you That's my hot smoking wife right there. <laughs> I asked God for a good looking wife. I didn't know any woman standing by me. Amen. God has in prayer. Where is he live? And our two beautiful daughters, Isabel and Ashley. My mom and dad who are here today. Amen. But God gave me this word as my wife and our kids were getting ready for our day on Wednesday and we drove our daughter to school and me and my youngest had a drive to drop my wife off at work and on the way home, God began to speak to oh. me. And as I got home, I prepared breakfast for my little one. I said, baby, I'm going to turn on the TV. Daddy's going to go into the room for a little bit and she looked at me because you have to preach to me, don't you? I said, yes, that's right. So she allowed me to go into my prayer closet. And God took me to the book of Joshua. And this scripture has meaning to me because my grandmother, my mom's mother, who went home to be with the Lord in 2006, this was her go-to scripture. When they asked if anyone had a verse to share, my grandmother would pop up from behind the piano and begin to share this verse. So Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, when you have it, say amen. Amen. Reading from the NIV, it says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Let's pray. Yeah. Woo, yeah. Father, Thank you, Jesus. I yield myself to you now. Yes. Use me as your oracle to preach your word yes. that is placed on my heart. Yes, Lord. I pray that this word would penetrate the hearts of your people. Yes. That it would take root and bear good fruit. Yes, Lord. So that we are not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Yes. Father, have your own, your own way today. Have your way. Have your way. Have we your release way. you. Have to have your way. Yes, Lord. We step aside. God, I pray for salvation and for miracles in this house. God, I pray, don't give us an upper room experience. Give us a better experience. 
God let your fire hit this house today. Woo! Hey! In your holy and precious oh, name we yes. pray. And God's people said amen. Amen. You yes. see it in the presence of the Most High God. Amen. I'm not going to stay behind this pulpit very long. I like to walk while I preach. So if you get seasick, don't worry. It's a miracle service. All right. Yeah, boy. <laughs> the title of my message is very simple. It's be strong. Mm -hmm. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Ooh, be strong. And I believe that we are living in a time as the body. Can I just talk to the body of Christ today? Go ahead, yes. Where we need to be strong. Yes. Things are happening in the spirit where God is preparing us to be strong. Yes. That's right. Things are happening in the natural that are preparing us to be strong. My hope is not in whoever sits in the old law. Right. My hope is in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The one who sits on the throne of the Lord. Do I pray for our leadership? Of course. I'm praying for revival in America. I'm praying that the body of Christ gets back to preaching Jesus. Yes. I'm, I'm praying that the body of Christ gets back to not just preaching the cross, right. but preaching the man who hung on the cross. Yes. Yes. It is time for America yes. to experience the raw power of God. Yes. And I believe it's going to start right now. But we have to be strong. We have to be rooted in God's word and in his presence. There are too many people in the body of Christ who come into the house of God with their head hung low. Walking around depressed and full of anxiety. I hate that devil of depression and anxiety. Because the Bible says we're full of the joy of the Lord. Joy unspeakable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we have to learn how to recognize the attack of the enemy. All right. See, because it's easy to praise him on the mountain top. Oh, yes. That's nice. Yeah. That's easy. It's easy when you're in the season of blessing and miracles to yeah. praise God. But I dare you to praise him in the valley. I dare you to praise him when you're going through the storm. Yes, Lord. My wife and I in September, we had a praise when we went through the storm. My wife was pregnant with our third baby. Four months into the pregnancy, and we found out she lost the baby. Our world was shaken, but not destroyed. All right. Yes. But yet we found a way to praise God through the storm. Yes, Lord. Yes. It wasn't easy. There were tears. And questions for God. But we praise them through the storm. Woo! When I called my pastor to give him the news, he said, we're praying. Yeah. He said, but just think, you'll have all of eternity to get to know that baby. Amen. All right. Another man of God told me, he goes, now you must fulfill the legacy of that baby that's in heaven. Because we have to be strong. Yes. The devil comes and as believers we get to a place that when we hear the devil, we want to hide behind our pastor. Yeah. We want to hide behind our favorite television preacher. Yeah. We want to go and hide behind the bush and sing very softly how great is our God while we're shivering in the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. But see, the devil's not chasing him. I'm chasing him. I'm chasing him out of my life and out of my home and out of my family and out of my life. He's got no business near me. I'm a child of God. 
Albright. Yeah. 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 So I walk around like I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. My father is a king. I'm royalty to God. Yeah. All right. You yeah. are royalty to God. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let anyone ever tell you different. That's right. But we have to learn how to be strong. Yeah. Because trials come. We're going to go through the fire. But what will you do? So many times we get to a place where we begin to pay more attention to our situation and problem than we do to the one who can solve the problem. That's right. That's right. We tend to worship our situation yes, yes. and not worship the God who can bring us out of the situation. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pastor Benny Hinn told me one time, he goes, when the devil throws you into a room, God opens the window. Amen. We need to put the devil back under our feet. Where he Woo. Is. Amen. Amen. I'm tired of the devil. Yeah. I'm tired of him trying to stick his nose in business where it doesn't belong. That's right. Oh, yeah. I'm tired. Yes. I have made a decision Woo. to chop off the devil's head yeah. <laughs> with the word of the living. <laughs> but in order for me to go into battle, I have to be strong. Yeah. Yeah. See, so many times we want to go into battle and then the devil hits us with a body shot and we fall to our knees. <laughs> yeah. The devil starts to mess with our money and then we wonder where God is. Yeah. God is still God. Yeah. Woo. He's still God. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, what? Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we can get too loud in church. Sometimes we can be too loud in our prayer time. Sometimes all we do is talk in prayer and we don't give God a chance to talk back. Come on. Can I get some help in the house? All right. All right. Yeah. We're more concerned about telling God our need instead of letting God speak to our need. Yes. Come on, y'all. Yes. I came with a word today. Go ahead. We have to be strong. You may have gotten a report from the doctor. And listen, we have a healing ministry. We believe in the supernatural. Yeah. I believe in doctors. We have to go to the doctor. God uses doctors. He may not use lawyers, but he uses doctors. Yeah. <laughs> God has given the ability to men and women to come up with different medications to help the body. That's right. We're told to take care of the temple. Yes. In the natural. Yes. Listen, I grew up on the southwest side of Chicago, near Bogan High School and near Marquette Park. I know what it's like to have Harold's chicken. <laughs> and feel what? the Holy Ghost while I'm having Harold's chicken. Oh, I just know the black. I know what it's like to go to go to JJ Fish and have two. I know. Yeah. I know what it's like to go into Dunkin' Donuts and get too many vanilla long johns. Uh, yeah. But then I can't blame the devil when I get if I get diabetes. Yeah. The Bible says we're destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. That's right. Oh yeah. No doubt there's not a devil of Dunkin' Donuts that's making me go to Dunkin' Donuts. Long johns are not appearing at my front door. That's right. And I have to keep it. That's right. We have to be strong. We have to be strong. This summer, I started running. Mm. I told my wife, I'm going to start running. She almost fainted. <laughs> she said, where? To McDonald's? Or where, where are you running? <laughs> where are you going? The refrigerator. You know, where are you running? But something came over me one day, and I said, I need to take better care of myself. Well. One, because it's the temple. Yes. God has called me, and we're going to be traveling, and I need to be able to go from city to city and nation to nation Amen. and preach the gospel. Amen. 
And I want to be around for my wife and my children when God has said, I've been listening for ministry. So I began to run. My wife said, that first two weeks, felt like my legs were going to fall off. And I would run two miles a day, four times a week. I would run one direction. I would run actually north. And I had to stop because there's a great burger joint and Chinese restaurant. And I, just, I, I can't run that way. Because then there were times I wanted to stop. You know, it's one of those burger joints when you get the burger and the bag rips because the grease on the burger. That you can see, hallelujah. So I had to start running south. You know, you pass a Walgreens and dry clean, you know. Now I pushed it up to three miles. Four times a week when I came. Because we have to be strong. In the natural and in the spirit. Because the devil will wear you down in the natural. But yet we have saints of God who never want to see a doctor think we have to suffer from me. I grew up old school Pentecost. Where the women of the church would come in holding the other shoulder in the other hand thinking, well, I'm just suffering from you. Go to the doctor. That's right. But see, the key is, is that when man or woman has run out of resources, that's when the Holy Ghost steps in. Yeah, yeah. When the doctor has said there's no more we can do, the great physician walks in the room. Woo! The healer shows up. Our ministry is founded on one scripture, Exodus 15, 26. I am the God who healed you. He said I am, meaning yesterday, today, and forevermore. The same Jesus that healed as he walked through the earth is going to heal here tonight. But we tend to focus on the report or the situation. It is our duty to focus on Jesus. Amen. I'm reminded of Peter. Remember when the disciples were on the boat and they let Jesus be moved? And they saw Jesus walking on the wall. Peter said, Lord, if that's you, call me. So he did. Jesus called Peter and Peter got out of the boat. Now, if we live in a time like today, you know, the other 11 disciples would have taken out their camera phone and their tablet. It would have been on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. It would have been all over the place. Yeah. And Peter was walking towards Jesus. But the moment Peter took his eyes off the master, he began to sing. Yeah. And then cry out, Lord, sing. Yeah. Lord, sing. There are too many believers who are singing. And it's only for one reason, man of God, because we have taken our eyes off the master. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we have to learn how to be strong in God's word. Yeah. We just read to meditate day and night. It's not enough just to memorize scripture. All right. The Bible says the devil knows the scripture. You sure know. That's right. See, there's a difference between quoting a hundred scripture and actually living the scripture. That's right. Oh, yeah. See, we, we talk about holiness, but we don't want to live holy. Oh, yeah. We talk about Christianity, but we don't want to be Christ like. But we need to be strong in God's word. I believe we are in a season that miracles are about to break loose yeah. across America. Yeah. I believe that with all my heart. Yeah. Miracles are about to break loose. And it's going to happen at Living Water. Yeah. When you expect God to move, He moves. Woo. When you make him the guest of honor, he moves. Yes. But see, so many times the enemy attacks. And we think we're rooted in the word, but then we begin to shift. 
And then we forget about every scripture and every good message that the pastor has preached. We don't put on the praise and worship music anymore. But see, when the devil comes now, oh, he hates to see me come. Because I'm rooted in God's word. Yeah, that we need to come. I may rock back and forth, but I'm not going to move off the Alright, alright. Because I'm going to move one foot with the Word of God and then the love of God. Then the Word of God and then the love of God. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be strong in God's Word. Yes, strong in His Word. Yes. Turn to the book of Psalms. Yes. The 121st chapter. Look at I move my coat, Pastor. It's a little warm. Psalms 121, we're going to read verse 1 and 3. Because I believe it's also time for the body of Christ to regain joy and peace. Yeah. Too many people in church depressed. Yeah. Too many people in church coming into church depressed and still walking out depressed. Something's not right. That's it. Psalms 121, verse 1, when you have it, say Amen. It says, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter 5, cast all your cares and anxieties upon you. But this is what we do. We say, Lord, I'll give you this. I'll give you this. Because that's easy. But I can't, I can't let you have this because it's comfortable. I can't give you my alcohol addiction because it's comfortable. I can't give you my cigarette addiction because it's comfortable. I can't give you my lust problem because it's comfortable. I can't put a lock on my computer so I don't look at the porn anymore because it's comfortable. But see, we want to give God the easy stuff. But see, God is asking you for the big stuff. God is asking you to get rid of the relationship that you know you're not supposed to be in anymore. That's right. God wants you to release and let go of the things so he can put you in the ministry you're supposed to be in. Yes, yes. And it kills me to see pastors and ministries who have people leading their church and ministry and they know they're out drinking and smoking and cussing and fussing. That ain't done. Sorry. All right. Oh, yeah. 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 I know there are scriptures about being drunk and I get it. I know. But it's time we get God's house in order. God is about order. We need to get God's house in order. But we can't do that if we're not strong. That's right. We can't if we're not strong. That's right. It's impossible. God wants to release something in your life. Yeah. But you have to let go of the things that he wants first. Yeah, Lord. And we need to regain joy and peace yeah. in our hearts. If I'm a child of God, there's no reason for me to be blessed. If someone who hung and died on the cross for me so that I didn't have to, I should be excited. And for someone, if he tarries, will come back for me, I should be excited. All right. Yeah, Lord. But we have to be strong in God's word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without his presence, there's no power. Without his presence, there's no power. No power. I pray tonight that you fall recklessly in love with me. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's amazing. This year, November 2nd, I celebrated 21 years ago. November 2nd, 1991, I gave my heart to Jesus. I was 13 years old. We were attending a church in Hammond, Indiana called Calvary Temple. And on a Saturday night, I gave my life. I grew up in church. This is all I do. I'm not skilled to do anything else. I grew up in church. 
But we didn't care about time. We didn't care that the PowerPoint wasn't working. We just let God be God. Yes. But now if we're not done in two hours, we don't fit in church. Right. But yet, we got people over this weekend standing in line for two hours to watch a Twilight movie. How come there are not people standing in line and waiting to get into the house? Because we're not strong. We've let that be okay. And the world is seeking the supernatural. Yes. Because we're seeing movies about vampires and they want the supernatural. They just don't know where to look. It is our job to be strong and show the world the supernatural power of God. Yeah. I'm tired of the world. I'm tired of the world. Yeah. I tell the Lord every day, Lord, you can have it. They can have it all. I just want your presence. All right. That's it. I just want to be consumed by it every day. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to be strong. We have to be strong. The devil comes and we get sick. You know, we have bullies in school. I grew up with bullies. You know, they're there. They've always been there. What's the best way to treat a bully? Now, this is the old school part of me. You punch them back, right? <laughs> then the bully realizes, well, I can't bother him anymore. Amen. But a bully will always pick on you if you allow them to. Yes. Yes. That's how the devil is. The devil will come and go, so you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You'll never be anything. God will never use you. That's what we let the devil do. That's right. But until we say, greater is he that is in me. And he said, the day he gave his life to the Lord, hell cried and said, we lost a good one. <laughs> we need to make hell cry more. That's right, yeah. We need to be able to shake the gates of hell. Yeah. And be strong. walking around with church. Yeah. Can I just keep it real? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a raw preacher. It's all right. And I still got a little bit of getting with me from growing up on the side of the <laughs> Where are you going? I'm just tired of what America thinks church should be like. Right. Headed pews, a nice program. Make sure we draw out the people. Get, you know, lights and fall. But where's the power of God? Where is Jesus? Where's Jesus? Apostle Long out was down in Miami, Florida said, you know, he goes, Pastor, when people ask me how my service was, and they say, oh, it was good. He goes, was the supernatural? If they say no, good, then it wasn't a good service. Well, we need the supernatural. I grew up in church seeing the supernatural weekly. I said this over at Abel Ministries on Saturday. We saw people fall under the power of God, and half the time we didn't know if it was the power of God or in this room. But we were just interpreting that on. But we have to be strong in God's word. We have to be rooted in the word of God. Yes! You have to be able to catch the vision of your pastor and his wife. And stand with them and not pray against them. Because there are people who will pray against my wife in this ministry. You know what I do? I say, Lord, you take care of her. Right. The Bible says what vengeance belongs to you. That's it. Oh, yeah. I'll pray for you. Yeah. I'll pray for my enemies. 
So God, you deal with it. People come up to me at the time. I don't like the way you do. Well, then why are you here? You knew I was coming. Go home. Well, praise Can you keep it real? That happens in my own church. I don't like how you preach. They've been announcing me for a month. Go home. You knew I was coming. Well, I don't like your style of preaching. I didn't ask you. All right. I don't like how you worship. I didn't ask you. That's right. Yeah. You're too radical. Jesus was radical. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Listen, I just got a phone call. I'm not going to mention names because it's on video. <laughs> I was scheduled to go to Clarksville, Tennessee in January for a two-man miracle service. They called me Friday. said, you know what? We don't want you to come. You're too radical. I said, Jesus was radical, so what's the problem? Mm. I said, okay, that's fine. I tell God, I tell God every day, shut the doors that need to be closed and open the big ones that I can. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get upset with that phone call. Because then five minutes later, a man of God from Florida called me. Who right. we met in September, who was a part of a great family. That's where I get that phrase called recklessly in love with Jesus. Because he told that to me in the car down in Lake Mary, Florida in September. Mm. He called me and he said, he said, man of God, I just want to call tell you I love you. Oh, right. Man. He goes, he goes, send me the link to your website because our church is going to start supporting you monthly. God shuts the door and opens bigger doors. Yes. 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 The Philippines have invited me to go next year. India and Pakistan and Africa have asked me to come. Honduras has asked me to come and to go into their nation and preach the gospel. Woo. We're going to go. Go, go. We're going to go. I'm going to I tell the Lord every day, Lord, wherever you send me, I'll go. Chicago, Africa, Tennessee, so I'll go done. No. I don't need to preach in front of a thousand people. I'll preach in front of one person. God is good. Hey. I don't I don't believe in having a fee to come out of I didn't tell a pastor say, oh, I need X amount of dollars to come preach. Uh -huh. God will provide you. Yes, he will. God will bless you. He knows my faithfulness. He knows the faithfulness of my wife. He knows our heart. God will provide. He'll provide. I've been in full time ministry for four years, January 1st, where I left my job and stepped out to call God. <laughs> Why? Because we're going to be strong in God's word. Yes. yes. We're givers. We support other ministries monthly. And it's hard. Because sometimes it seems like there's more money than money, but God still provides. <laughs> what good is the money? I can't take it with me to heaven. Right? I like nice things. I'm not going to say that I don't. Do I want to buy a home? Of course I do. My children deserve to be in a home. Do I need to drive a Lamborghini? Absolutely not. But at the end of the day, all I have is me to give to God. I'm the sacrifice. But I can only do that if I am not strong in God. We have to get back to the basics of the Word of God. People say, how do you read your Bible? One, I open it. Two, I read it from Genesis to Revelation. I believe in devotion time, don't get me wrong. But I read my Bible from Genesis to Revelation. If I was to give you a book, you wouldn't start in the middle. That's right. And jump around to the word of God. All right. I have to know the history. So I read it from Genesis to Revelation. Then I do my devotion. I don't know why we do that with the Word of God. We just want to open it and point. Okay, this is what I'm reading. That's not God. We 
read it correctly. Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Right. People say, well, I don't understand the Bible. And I ask, well, how are you reading it? Well, I started in the gospel. You want to understand the gospel if you don't understand Old Testament. Oh. That's right. New Testament is prophecy for good. Yeah. But if you don't know what was prophesied, you don't know how that became true. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have to be strong in God's word. Yes. Yeah. And then he will meet every need we have. Yeah. Because he's a faithful and just God. And I believe that we are going to see the power of God hit his heart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Only if you allow God to move. We tend to put God in a box, Brother David. We put the limits on God. God has no limits. He's more than the box I try to put him in. Yeah. But it's when I let God out of the box. See, you can't plan the Bible, you just pray for the Bible. And I believe that God is going to heal the sick today from the inside out. God is concerned about healing our heart and our minds and our spirit, our finances, our relationships, our ministry. God heals the heart. When I gave my life to the Lord, He healed my heart. God wants to heal me today. And I believe I've come in the right time, in the right season. To release this anointing that's been imparted on my life by men of God. And that God has continued to grow. God wants to heal you from the inside out. The old song we used to sing in church is Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Yes! Are you ready for your miracle? Yes! yes. Are you ready to be strong in God's yes, way? Yes. Stand to your feet all over this time. Yes! Hallelujah!
you've lost them, so you might as well just accept it and get it over. Yeah. I'm not playing with you, devil. Go. Go. Go.
friendship you started between us. I really 
say about David? God, we know that you're pleased with David. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. God, set her free. Let her fall recklessly in love with you. Just as David and Kisha. Oh my God. The presence of God is here. You can't fake this. You can't plan this. Stand to your feet all over this. We're just going to stand in reverence to God. Just lift your hands and just worship. Bring me that young man. Come here, young man. Do you know him? How old are you? You know you're supposed to be a youth pastor? The call of God on your life. Guys, young boys who look up to you because of you. But God needs to release you. In the next five or six years, God's going to begin to do a work in your life. He'll begin to stretch you. You want to be used? 
God break down the chains that seem to bind Release some of the friends that he doesn't need to be around anymore. And send the friends that are going to be a tower for him. And let him not be ashamed of the gospel. And to tell his buddies about Jesus. Great anointing on your life. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I can feel him trembling. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Go through him. Heal his heart. Consume him with your fire. God. God. His heart is beating a million times a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We release this anointing. Yes, Lord. Forget about the past. Yes, Lord. Yes. He's a right now. Yes. Get close to your past. Thank you, Jesus. Get close to him. Yes, Lord. I release the Thank you, Pastor Minor and First Lady. Oh, 
I honor you and what God is doing. I thank you for allowing me to come and minister and let God have his way. I'll be praying for this house daily.